This is level P list six and we're doing the day one page. And here we've got the EA making the E sound and we're adding the R to it to get ear. So EA plus the R makes the, makes the sound ear. So let's highlight that in each of these words. We've got hear, seer, clear, sheer, beard, up here, nuclear, weary, dreary, and bleary. So on the end, these last couple of words, or three words, we've got the Y making the E sound on the end of those words. That's a common way we write the E sound on the end of a word. Okay, so there's um, not a lot more that you need to be aware of in this. Just remember that if you have a short at sound, you're going to double the consonant after it. New, clear, that's making a long U sound. Um, we know that's just a W because there's no air after the W when we say it. Um, you know the SH quite easily by now. Okay, let's have a look at what these words mean. Gear is a part of uh, a machine or a component in a machine. Machine. It can also mean things like in your get your sports gear means get your sport sport clothing or things you need for the game. Or you can have camping gear, etc. Um, gear can you can also have a gear box in a car, so it's part of the machinery in the car. Sear means to um, cook something with intense heat um, quickly and hard. Clear means it's easy to understand, it's clear cut, um, or it's easy to see. So it may be clear sighted, or something might be crystal clear, it means that you'll understand it easily. Shear means when you um, take the wool off or cut the wool off a sheep. Um, a beard is the hair on a man's face when it's left to grow. A peer means when something comes into sight. Nuclear is relating to the nucleus. We often use it in relation to energy or war. Um, weary is when you're tired. Dreary is when something is um, dull or bleak and we usually use that in relation to the weather. Bleary means that um, you can't see as well as you could so it's usually meaning uh, referring to eyes. Let's go back and read the words, sound the words well and then write them. So get your little bit of paper to cover with and we're going to write these words. So gear, good ear, good ear, good ear, spell it G-E-A-R, 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 cover it and you can do the loop on the G if you want to or you can leave it and then go straight into your AR. Today's words are gear, seer, clear, sheer, beard, up here, nuclear, weary, dreary and bleary. Here we've got the long E, A, the E, A making the long E sound. And if we add an R to the end of it, it becomes ear. This is a common um, combination we see in words, but the phonogram is actually E, A, and we're just adding the R. So we went through these definitions yesterday of what these words mean. So you can go back and have a look at that if you're unsure. And here we've got a little crossword which also goes through the definition. So remember, do the ones you can, and then any tricky ones, go back and have a go. Um, once you've filled in a lot of those squares. Now down here we've got some tricky words. We've got write the correct words. So we've got weary, where, were, and where. So the trick to know whether there's an H after the W or not is to say the words like where, weary, were, where. You can only fill air on the where, so you know that where is the only one with the H after the W. A very good way of sorting out these two words if you're having difficulty remembering which one has the H. Down here you're just combining with a list word. So these are common pairs of words that we use um, and the words are up there for you to refer to. Our words today are gear, seer, clear, sheer, beard, up here, nuclear, weary, dreary and bleary. So here you've got to look for the incorrect verb and write the correct verb tense on the line at the end. I suggest you go through with a highlighter and identify 
the verb and um, using its incorrect tense and so it's easy when you come to writing them over here. Now verbs usually you're going to change it to either an S, an ED or an ING um, but there is one irregular verb in this set so beware. Now comparatives and superlatives we know are adjectives because they describe a noun. So when we make a word into a comparative to say more, we add ER to the end. And when we change a word into a superlative to make it say the most of something, we add EST. Now in this set, be careful because if a word ends in Y, before you add the ER or the EST, you must change the Y to an I. You can't just get rid of that sound. You can't say we're er, it's got to be we're it er. We're it us. So just be careful of that too when you're doing drear it er and drear it us. You've got to keep that um, sound that the Y is making. Now then you're going to use these words here to finish off the sentences um, and make sure that you, you're looking to work to use either the comparative or the superlative in each of them. And here you're going to fill in the gap with the missing plural. So these are plural nouns. So you have to work out which of the nouns up here and you need it, write them in, in their plural form if that's appropriate. Right, here we've got a sound sort uh, for E-A-R making three different sounds. So it can say er as in pearl, air as in wear, and ear as in hear. So I'd suggest you give each one a different colour and then go through and highlight them um, depending on which sound it's making and then write them under that colour. Um, down the bottom we've got to fill in the gaps with the er sound and sort into the correct group. So here we're looking at four different er sounds or four different ways of writing the er sound. We've got ir, ur, er, eaar. Um, once again I'd highlight each of those sound, those um, phonograms and then go back and find the words with that um, missing phonogram. So birth will be the IR. So once you've written it in, you go back down and write it on the line. You can finish the rest of those.